<laughs> Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Hi, Krista. Hi. It's so great to have you with us today. So today we are going to be speaking a little bit, bit about lymphedema, lymph drainage, all those fun things. Um, it is Lymphedema Awareness Month, which is really interesting. Uh, if you guys didn't know that, it's almost the end of the month. I hope that you do. And so we're going to be chatting a little bit about how this affects our patients and what we can do about it. If you're joining us live, please introduce yourself. Let us know where you are and what your interest is in today's topic. We would love to chat with you. That's why we're on Facebook so that you can be part of the conversation. So please join in um chat with us be a part of this so krista do you want to introduce yourself just briefly and let us know what your interest is in lymphedema the lymphatic system and working with it so originally uh, i'm an equine rehabilitation specialist in that uh, my original training was with uh, swedish massage techniques actually and then i branched into cranial sacral therapy and discovered 20 years ago this month actually in april uh, lymphatic drainage therapy and I just truly became so fascinated it's the most understudied system in the body whether it's human or equine or canine uh, but I truly think like this is the therapy of the future like there is so many things that you can help when you do sort of uh, work on the lymphatic system and help increase circulation and so then the I completed my advanced training and um, so basically I've specialized in equine lymphedema treatment for almost 15 years now so I get a lot of cases uh, from veterinary referrals and things like that because they just don't know once, you know, the medication's been given, they don't know how to treat it. So I've been very, very lucky to have the support from the veterinarians here. Okay, that's awesome. So I want to say welcome to Ginger. It's great to have you. She's from Oklahoma. And she says, I love Krista and Hester Van Tate. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Ginger, for joining us and for introducing yourself. Oh, and we have Megan as well from South Africa. Hi, Meg. <laughs> and she loves her history gear. Oh, absolutely. Oh. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> so, Crystal, let's talk a little bit about the lymphatic system, I think, because um, as you said, it's something that we actually don't pay enough attention to and we don't... Um, yeah, think about it enough, study enough, understand it enough. Um, tell us a little bit more just about the system itself. So it's really, it's a lymphatic system, but you have to always consider that, you know, the heart functions good, the lung functions well, um, and that the kidneys are also doing their job in filtration. Okay, so a very integrated system, very much part of every other or many other systems in the body. Um, okay, so let's talk about lymphedema and why it happens in our equine patients, especially. Uh, so lymphedema basically what happens is that the lymphatic system can't evacuate excess fluid. So it does a good job every day of filtering this fluid. You know, it goes down the leg via one channel, it comes back up the other channel, filters through the lymph nodes, goes through the body, and one of two things either happens. It gets pumped back through the heart or it gets filtered out through the kidneys and urinated into the stall. That's generally what happens. So if you have a horse that had a trauma, say for example, they had a, a crushing blow over a fence, um, that alters those lymphatic vessels. And when those, any time that the lymphatic system is overwhelmed, it just doesn't seem to cope really well. It likes to be moving fluidly and have no problems. But as soon as there is something like that trauma where the vessels are crushed, um, the fluid, has nowhere to go and so that's when you start to get that swelling and then the body still thinks we're going to use a leg for example the body still thinks that it can send fluid down that pathway and up the ascending pathway and it can't because that ascending pathway is blocked so the fluid still gets sent down the leg and then you get more and more and more and more swelling so 
the other things that um, cause lymphedema is mismanagement. You know, if you have an open wound and scar tissue forms, uh, it can be from surgery where the vessels are actually cut. It can be from um, a longstanding illness, right? Because the lymphatic system has a huge role to play in the immune system. So if you have an illness or multiple illnesses over time, it still hasn't caught up and filtered out everything uh, from the time before it was sick. Uh, so that's also a big reason why it gets out of hand. Oh, I lost you. I can't hear you. That's my bad. I saw my three-year-old running towards me and muted myself just in case and then forgot that I did that. Um, okay, so I want to talk a little bit more about the um, the link to the immune system because I have to be honest, you know, I know those reasons that you've mentioned now for lymphedema occurring, but in all of the cases that I've kind of been exposed to, and it hasn't been many, it's not something that that's I've personally seen very, very often, but all of mine have been um, thoroughbreds that have come off the track kind of within a six month period um, where there isn't an obvious wound or an obvious trauma that could have led to the, to the lymphedema, um, where it kind of just suddenly happened and we can't find a cause or a reason. Um, and usually the vet will speak about, you know, there might have been a little cut or, a, you know, a puncture or something on the leg um, that allowed some bacteria in there. Um, but it's never been something that we could say, yes, here is a little cut or here is a, a small wound that might have introduced bacteria. So in that kind of scenario, my thought is that, you know, there's already a compromise within the gastrointestinal system as they're recovering from being on the track and that, that huge lifestyle change. Um, there's a compromised immune system and that has then it, some small trigger in the environment has led to this lymphedema. Can you talk a little bit more about kind of that presentation of it? I'd have to say a lot of the, the true lymphatic cases that I see are it, they're idiopathic causes. We don't know why. Um, whether we get an inaccurate health history, whether there was damage to, we're going to say we'll stick with the leg, for example. Um, so, you know, and maybe, you know, last year he, you know, interfered and got a little bruising and they never really did much with it. And then, yeah, it, and most lymphedema does occur gradually over time. Um, and the other thing too, for a horse that's coming off the track, you have to think there's 8,000 lymph nodes approximately in the horse. And there's very, very few in the lower leg. So for a horse, when you have um, that's very, very active and very, very fit, you know, it would make sense that the lymphatics are actually working at their optimal uh, rate. But then you take them off the track and you take them out of that exercise program and then you put them in a stall, what happens? The body is not used to having to do all that work itself. And so the horse is standing around and um, that's when you get kind of these stocking up things. But it can be, yeah, absolutely that there was an, um, you know, an old infection. Lymphatic fluid, if, if ever anybody takes anything away from this, lymphatic fluid cannot pass through scar tissue. It just can't. So it might have been, you know, a cut that either was treated or wasn't treated. Uh, it could be that, you know, the horse had a reaction to a vaccine along with a cut. And it's just that the lymphatic system gets backed up, backed up, backed up and can't cope anymore. And then will present as, as edema. Okay. And if we're saying that kind of it, it's generally occurring over a period of time, um, are we thinking about like fold legs, for example, as an, as a, can you hear me? Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I was... <laughs> so are we thinking about like filled legs? So you come in to the stables in the morning and you have some thickening of the legs, which um, goes away within an hour or so of being turned out. Is that a sign that the lymphatic system is compromised and that we should be helping that system a little bit? It certainly can be, um, but oftentimes it's just that the horse isn't moving and because there's not a lot of lymph nodes in the leg, it needs to 
to use the muscles to pump that fluid out. So sometimes it's not a concern. If it's that the horse clears itself within an hour, once they're mm-hmm. moving and, and it's not, you know, it may be an indication that the lymphatics are getting sluggish, but it may just be that they're, they didn't move all night. Um, I would be more concerned if the edema did not go down. Um, and that's something that I wanted to talk about a little bit is that there's not just, um, you know, one type of edema. There's a local edema. For example, if you have one fetlock that's swollen, uh, as opposed to a regional uh, edema where that would be the entire shoulder, front leg, and down. Mm-hmm. And then there's a systemic edema. A systemic edema is, you know, when you see very odd swellings, uh, it could be pockets of swelling all over. It could be that, uh, the horse looks like it's cut in half. So the complete lower half of the body is swollen. And with systemic edema, you have to 100% call your vet right away. Um, It can be that that gradually happens. And that's what I've seen most in my practice. Uh, But it can mean that the heart, lung and kidney function is, is not working at all. And so it really, really is uh, imperative that if you see large amounts of swelling um or of course if they're hot then you need to call mm-hmm. your vet right away because these are very very serious issues and could be life-threatening okay all right i just want to say a welcome to those of you that have joined us in the interim it's really great to have you we are chatting to krista today and we're speaking about lymphedema um, and the lymphatic system in horses um florence you've asked if it would be possible to get a recording of this Yes, absolutely. The recording will stay on the Facebook page. So you're welcome to watch the replay at any time. If you're catching this as a replay, you're you're watching this as a recording once we're done here. Um, it's great to have you. Let us know. Please introduce yourself. Let us know what you think. Um, and if you have any questions, you're welcome to pop them in the comments um, with a little hashtag replay and we'll come back to them and answer them um, at a later point. Um, And then Jennifer has said that she definitely agrees that there's a link to GI issues with any lymphatic system trouble. Um, So thanks, Jennifer, for that. I think it's quite an interesting thought to consider. You know, we're we're better understanding the role of the gastrointestinal system in dogs and in people. And uh, not so much, you know, we're not talking about it so much yet in the equine world. So... Um, definitely something for us to think more about as we go forward. So let's um, go back to a kind of normal presentation of lymphedema in a leg. How do you, how does that progress generally, Krista? What is the like normal progression that we would be looking at? So say, for example, um, you go out and you check your horse one day and he is a little bit swollen. And then you're like, oh, it looks like a little bit of a cut. I'll see how it goes. I'll, you know, treat it and bandage it. And and then the next day you come out and you're like, oh my gosh, the whole leg is swollen. So when that happens, it's really important that you connect with your veterinarian, um, especially if it's hot, because if it's hot, that means it could be cellulitis, which is uh, very, very serious and can be life threatening. Um, and so it, lymph, lymphatic issues, there are are no cookie cutters. There's there's no set program. It's a lot of uh, waiting and treating and uh, cold hosing. And the worst thing that anybody can do is put like no, you know, those uh, ceramic bandages back on track boots, anything like that. I understand the principle behind or why you would think that would be good is because the boots are designed to increase circulation but we have a compromised situation where now we can still bring fluid down the leg, which is exactly what those back on track and other ceramic fiber boots do, but we don't want more circulation there. We've got to get that fluid out. So the best thing to do is like cold hose, um, you know, ask your veterinarian if they need to be on any sort of medication, things like that. Once the edema becomes stagnant and it's, it's very, um, it's a very much of a roller coaster kind of treatment. You really have to keep on top of it. And one of the other things that many practitioners don't realize is that you cannot push the edema out of the leg. And when I, you know, help with taping uh, for practitioners, you know, I always tell them make sure that you have things horizontal. 
uh, or not horizontal, but more vertical if you have to, uh, because the tape applied this way creates a tourniquet effect. Lymphatic vessels have valves. You will never push that fluid up and out the leg because once you take that tape or that bandage off, what happens? It just pours back down. So you need to be able to take care of the sites above and around the edema. So if it is a full leg, there's no reason why you can't do some sort of therapeutic work taping above the site. You have to give that excess fluid somewhere to go because if not, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. And I have had many, many cases where the, the leg expanded so much that it compromised the skin and it breaks open. And then you have, now you have a first aid emergency on top of a lymphedema and the skin will crack and split and it looks like alligator skin. Um, and I've seen it where it's almost like the skin feels like you're coming out of a shower. It's, there's so much lymphatic fluid leaking out. Sure. It's, it's a horrible, a horrible thing to be dealing with and it doesn't take, um, yeah, it's not a quick thing that's, or it doesn't resolve very quickly. That's the word I'm looking for. What is the timeline that you're usually looking at to try and resolve the lymphedema? Honestly, there, there's no timeline. Um, every horse is different. Uh, the one thing that I can say is that uh, you have to always have a team effort. So whether it's you and the barn, um, the veterinarian, your therapist, whatever it's going to be, um, movement is invaluable. If at all possible, keep the horse moving. Um, but there is no real set timeline. I've worked on horses that I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to take forever. And once you clear the sites around it, the stagnant fluid evacuates and then they seem fine. Um, but that's, you know, with massage and other therapies, you, you know, I, you know, you can say that, yes, the horse may be sore for a day or two. And then with lymph lymphatic clients, you just never know. Um, almost always they will continue to drain after you've done your therapy, whether, you know, um, I know there's a lot of therapists that do PEMF and the Beamer blankets and stuff. So all of that would be above the site. Um, and as long as you don't do too much, you can't overtax the system, right? All right. So what are the some of our kind of most effective tools? You've mentioned um, PMF above and around the site um, and some of those other modalities. What, what do you think are the most effective ways for us to address lymphedema? Well, you know, cold is going to be your best friend. You don't want ice because that creates a, a vasoconstriction and a vasodilation. But cold is definitely your friend. Um, the biggest concern is that you want to make sure that, it's, you know, with systemic edema, you're going to call your vet. You're not going to be applying any sort of PEMF. You're not going to put a beamer blank. You're not going to tape. You need to get that the heart, lung function and kidney function checked. Um, but with uh, regional and local, I mean, certainly you always want to open up the lymph nodes uh, around that site, uh, you know, around the base of the neck, the inguinals and things like that. I think I lost your question though. <laughs> what modalities? Oh, okay. Yeah, so, what so you're probably going to be massaging, right? Yeah. So, so you can definitely massage and clear the site above. I specialize mm -hmm. in lymphatic drainage, so that's one of my go-tos. Another thing people don't realize is that you can treat the fascia above the site, right? Okay. Again, lymphatic fluid will not pass through scar tissue, adhesions, fibrosis. So if you can treat, or um, I'm a big fan of taping, obviously, <laughs> that's um, kind yeah. of my thing. Um, but, you know, once you do all of those modalities, you can apply your kinesiology tape and it's like the treatment keeps going, right? So that... The, the biggest concern with using any modality is to make sure you have to know what medication the horse is on mm -hmm. because and when it was given because you don't want to push that fluid through faster or that fluid, that medicine through faster than it's supposed to, right? Mm -hmm. So if I get a call for a lymphedema case, the vet was just there, they're on five-day antibiotics, I may go check them and get them to still just do cold hosing and hand walking and I'll be back at the end of the medication cycle. Um, there have been really severe, severe cases that the vet has been here every day and um, I treat them because I have 
the vet right there. Um, so it's really, you know, it depends on the complexity of, of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the situation. Okay. It's generally quite painful for the horses um, and movement is, you know, the best thing we could get them to do. So how do we, um, in addition to giving them adequate pain medication, how do we help them move? What are some of the things we can do to make it a little bit easier for them to move? Just the fact of even just hand walking up and down an aisle will get the muscles pumping around those lymphatic vessels and that'll help. Um, I did have a mare in last year and her feet were just awful because she had so much edema, she couldn't bend that hawk for the farrier to trim, right? So it's doing, if you're really comfortable, you can do like passive range of motion exercises. Um, but sometimes if you, you know, the, the joint is so swollen or the leg is so swollen, you can't even get to inner range joint mode. So, um, you know, oftentimes that Pete, they can't tr turn the horses out uh because they are not you know because they're so sick but even just a little bit of hand walking up and down an aisle is, is better than nothing at all okay. okay fantastic and what advice should we give our owners who are working with and treating with this condition in their own horses you know it's it's again i said this but earlier it's a little bit of a roller coaster condition you know one day they're great the next day um i'm actually speaking with uh, somebody online now and that's exactly what's happening is that they're going through this emptying and filling phase but they're staying stagnant and, and it's because the the injury is starting to fibrose so while there's healing you don't want necessarily to be disrupting that uh mm -hmm. That injury you know from recovering but we need to keep that fluid moving and that's when I say you know don't forget you can t you know do some sort of modality above the site um, but the biggest thing for horse owners is that you know just be really patient you know try not to freak out don't read everything you read online you know and really trust your your healthcare practitioner um, there's a lot of things that you know people say you know oh you can put this blister on or that you know um, <laughs> But the best thing you can do is trust your healthcare professionals and your veterinarian in, in cases like this and make sure that you always take pictures, uh, you know, and so that way that you can, you know, you may be freaking out on Wednesday, but when in actual fact, it's way better than it was on Monday. So that's, that's a big thing I always say is just take a deep breath in, you know, if you have any problems, call um, your practitioners, your veterinarian, um, and just stay on top of it. One case that always comes to mind was a big draft horse and mm -hmm. the vet had referred me out. And so I talked to the owner before I met with them and uh, the edema was so, so severe. Like the poor horse's leg was elephant size, but I get there and you know, the vet had told me, he says, Krista, I've done everything. I've given her every single medication I can do. I've given her the special cream that we made. I've done everything. And I walk to the, or I go out to the barn and they pull the horse in out of the field. And this lovely mare is standing two feet of manure. Like, I mean, two feet. So that horse was never going to have a favorable outcome because they couldn't or wouldn't manage the environment that the horse lived in. Like it was absolutely tragic. Um, and there was not a thing I could do. Like literally it was covered in manure the whole way up. And I mean, not just a little flakes. I mean, it was in manure soup. And so that's really tough when you get cases like that. And uh, so I think management is key. You know, you have to make sure that, that everybody's on the same page and, mm -hmm. you know, you can spend a thousand dollars on medicine, but if you're not willing to, you know, manage the rest of the scenario, then there's, it, it's kind of futile sometimes. Okay. All right, so I see a few more people have joined us. Welcome, guys. It's really great to have you. Uh, we are chatting about lymphedema in equine patients, and we're about to talk a little bit about taping as a way to help work with that. So if you're watching this as a recording, as a replay, um, hashtag replay, let us know who you are, where you're from, and if you have any questions or you want to join the conversation, that's why we're here. It's a conversation, so please join in. Um, Krista, kinesio tape can often be like, it's one of those things we immediately want to reach for for something like this. But 
Um, at the same time, because there's often some seepage through the skin, it can be really difficult to get a proper adhesion. Um, and it can almost be pointless to use kinesio tape in some situations. So how sh how do we use kinesio tape for these for these cases? Is there a way to more effectively apply it so that we get proper adhesion? Well, I think there's a lot of times when you have to go back and look at your contraindications. You're never going to tape on skin that's open and broken. Right. You're just not. And that's something that I always go back to uh, in, you know, remember what your contraindications to treatment are, uh, whether it's medication, injection site, a broken skin. Uh, you always go back to that. You know, uh, does the horse have a fever? Um, does so all of those indications are are not warranted for taping or treatment. Um, but some of the things like you can do. I had a conversation very uh, early this morning about somebody had um, an injection site, you know, would you tape around that? No, no, because whatever the, the veterinarian injected, I don't want to speed that through. So I wouldn't tape that. However, if you are just looking to help with circulation, you can definitely tape like all around the um, kidney area. You can tape around the base of the neck. You can do abdominal tapings. Um, even if you can't access that main spot, the majority of rehab, clients that come to my facility, uh, you they're so swollen and their skin is so broken that you couldn't even get taped down there anyway. So tape above the site and around the site and your fascial taping is invaluable. That is like opening up, uh, a, a, you know, the can because that opens up all those channels and then the stagnant fluid goes, oh, so maybe I can't go through this pathway but there's a whole other pathway, like the door is open on this side, so it'll evacuate that way. Okay. I really like that. So it, we really, if we think about um, movement, should also be thinking about like how can we move and mobilize the tissues around, uh, above and around the site when we can't actually, like you say, sometimes there just is, is so much swelling, you can't get any range in that leg. Um, they're struggling to wait, but they're struggling to work. So we could do some mobilization and some fascial release that's going to get those tissues above and around moving efficiently. So I really like that. Um, guys, do you have any questions um, or any comments to add? I, I actually, we have an announcement from Online Pet Health and Krista has an announcement. So Krista, do you want to go first? <laughs> oh, you do the announcement. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I go first. So, guys, notice I'm wearing our beautiful Vet Rehab Summer shirt. This is last year's one, Research Meets Reality. It was so amazing. Um, it's not really an announcement. It's just what's happening, and we're so excited about it. So, we've been planning our Vet Rehab Summit for this year. We have most of our lecture lineup worked out and ready, right? It's getting there. Um, it's on the 12th of November, so mark that down in your diaries. Get ready, guys. It's going to be amazing. And again, we are doing things very differently this year. So you'll have noticed that our theme options, if you're in any of our groups, um, are going in a stranger direction <laughs> to our normal <laughs> academic thinking, right? Our research and academic thinking. We are really going to focus on us as people and as professionals um, and having the support that we need to provide the best possible service to our patients and to be healthy, functional human beings. Um, so I'm really excited about that and I'm looking forward to sharing more information with you guys as it's ready to reveal. Um, Dee Wesley, thanks for joining us. She has a question. How often would you change the supportive tapings for lymphedema? So that again really depends, uh, D, on how much swelling is there, how long it's been there, is it acute, is it chronic? Um, oftentimes when you do lymphatic tapings, uh, the tape will accommodate for that fluid volume change. So meaning you tape for circulation or you tape uh, to, you know, loosen the fascia and then what happens is that the leg was this size when you taped it and then all of a sudden the fluid evacuated and now the leg is this small and the tape will actually pop right off like it's it's people often think it's a tape failure but it's not if you truly want to study uh lymphedema cases you actually take um 
measurements and there's a formula that you can calculate the fluid volume change. For me, I don't do that because it takes a long time and I just want to get to work. But um, earlier in my career, I did more of that sort of um, investigation. But so you want to change it as often as as needed. Uh, it, it might be that it stays on for two or three days. It might be that if it's a supportive tape for fascia, it, it stays on for a week. Um, it really all depends on the horse and the situation. Okay, fantastic. All right, those are all my questions. Christo, if you, if you want to share anything, you can. Otherwise, we will say goodbye for now. Well, I've been planning something too, and I know that, uh, look, I'm sweating. <laughs> um, so Hestaban came out with two very different tapes. Um, it's kind of a fib. <laughs> Thanks, D. <Dee. laughs> um, that's kind of a fib because I actually have a third tape. And when I sent out my little, you know, welcome to the team, um, stay tuned for tape three. Tape three has been ready for years, folks. Um, it is actually, I'm going to let it go out here public. Um, it's a lymphatic tape. And um, it's a hybrid of cotton with my satin adhesive and a little something special extra. Uh, the tape is, I've been using it for years in my own practice. It evacuates fluid uh, like magic. This stuff is so crazy. You guys are just gonna love it. Um, it was supposed to be here in, in, in a mass production in January. Uh, I thought releasing three tapes at one time would be a little crazy, uh, but you guys are absolutely going to be amazed. And um, the reason kind of why I'm sharing this uh, a little bit of ahead of time, even though it's not, it's here in Canada, um, I just don't have it at my office, and uh, it's because it's on the back of this. Remember I was teasing and I kind of blurred out the bottom? Well, this is so you can say to your, you know, to your clients that this is the tape I use and I use has to be on cotton for muscle applications, has to be on satin for fascia, and there it is. I don't know if you guys can see it. What's yeah. it called? Yeah. It's red lymph. Has to be lymph. So stay tuned. There's my big secret. It's uh, you guys are absolutely going to be shocked. It's already out um, in the tape tester platform. So I've had many colleagues use it and come back and give me feedback. And uh, so as soon as I can let that go live on the website, um, I will, you guys are going to be floored. It's magic, I kid you not. So I don't know, I wanted to have it released for March, you know, for Lymphedema Awareness Month, um, but it we may have to wait a little bit longer before I can put it on the store. But you will love it. I promise it's going. You will never do another fan taping. I promise you, unless you want to, you will never do another fan taping. That's and it. so you're going to. So so here's the thing. So I post a lot of pictures of my lymphedema clients. And what you're going to see is the real picture is that most of these clients, you'll see a couple of split screens where I did, you know, before and afters. And I'm going to show you guys the pictures now of this, my third tape, because it's been in use for years i just couldn't handle releasing three but you guys are gonna love it you've just been keeping it to yourself <laughs> no it's awful actually it's awful because um i wanted to let it go and my business mentor said just hang on let's let's deal with two tapes at once but um i fired him <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, because I really want this tape out there. I really think this is going to make such a huge difference for everybody. Um, yeah. You're going to find your lymphatic tapings are so much easier. And it's not just for lymphatics. It's for circulation, you know, tying up, all these kinds of things. But So stay tuned. Um, photos and all kinds of information coming soon. So I hope I didn't let, let the cat out of the bag too soon. But anyway, I can't, I can't keep quiet. No, I don't think you could. I'm so glad you listened to me and let everyone know because I think it's it's just really exciting and it is. Have you been using it on dogs as well? Just I've oh yes, people, you know. Oh yeah. Me. Okay. Great. <laughs> So, um, Caroline says, Yay, ordered your satin tape yesterday. Um, okay. Caroline, Carol, Caroline, yours went out this morning. My husband brought it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I just love the support from everybody. You know, it's it's been a massive endeavor. It's like with Carolyn, I think now with Hester Van Beat in Sweden, I think it's in 19 or 20 countries, and it's all because of you guys. I was 
just here in Eastern Canada, just, you know, taping my own clients. And um, it's just been amazing. And I, I love you all. Well, thank you so much for being so supportive. I, but you guys are going to just be thrilled with the, with the Pesta Van Lymph. Well, well done, Krista. It, it takes a lot to launch something like this. And um, yeah, well done. It's very thank exciting. You. Thank you. All right, guys, have a wonderful day further. If you've watched this as a recording, let us know, chat to us, be part of the conversation. Um, any questions, we'll come back and answer afterwards. So please feel free to share them, ask them, um, and let us know how you guys are doing, how your cases are doing, what your questions are. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks.